Did you know that your body naturally produces over 7,000 different peptides, each with unique healing properties? Yet most kidney patients have never heard about peptide therapy as a potential option for recovery. That's about to change today. I'm Dr. Basma Irfan, a physician on a mission to help you break free from symptom management and step into a life of thriving health. Together, we will uncover simple, powerful ways to prevent disease, restore energy, and take control of your health naturally. If you're ready to stop managing illness and start building vitality, you are in the right place. Your prescription for vitality starts now. Welcome to Wellness Focus with Dr. Basma, where I am a physician on a mission to help you break free from symptom management and step into a life of thriving health. Today, we are diving into an exciting frontier in medicine that's showing tremendous promise for kidney health and beyond, peptide therapy. If you're struggling with chronic kidney disease, inflammation, or tissue damage, this episode might introduce you to options your doctor hasn't mentioned. So what exactly are peptides? At their simplest, peptides are small chains of amino acids, the building blocks of proteins. But don't confuse them with complete proteins. Peptides are much shorter chains, typically containing between 2 and 50 amino acids. What makes peptides special is that they act as biological messengers in the body. They can bind to cell surface receptors and trigger specific responses, influencing everything from hormone production to immune function. The beauty of peptides is that they are actually present throughout your body already. Growth hormone, insulin, and many other crucial signaling molecules are peptides. Your body naturally produces these compounds to regulate countless biological processes. However, what's revolutionary in medical science is our ability to isolate these and synthesize and administer specific peptides to target particular health challenges. Unlike many pharmaceutical drugs with long list of side effects, peptides tend to work with your body's natural processes often resulting in fewer adverse reactions. For kidney patients, this is particularly meaningful. Rather than using a medication that might address symptoms but damage other organs in the process, peptides can potentially repair damaged tissue, reduce inflammation, and improve function by enhancing your body's own healing mechanism. Your kidneys are remarkable filtration organs containing approximately 1 million tiny filtering units called nephrons. When kidney disease develops, these structures become damaged through inflammation, scarring, fibrosis, and other injury. Kidney doctors typically focus on managing symptoms with medications that control blood pressure, reduce protein spillage, or address specific conditions like diabetes that may be causing kidney damage. While these approaches are important, they often don't address the underlying tissue damage. This is where peptide therapy shows such promise. Several peptides have demonstrated potential to actually repair damaged kidney tissue, reduce scarring, and improve kidney function at the cellular level. Every person is different and has different root causes. What works for one person may not be the right treatment for another, which is why results vary when using peptides or any other therapeutic approach. There are no guarantees on how much kidney function can improve, but the potential for improvement does exist when addressing root causes. Let's explore three specific peptides that show exceptional promise for kidney health. One of the most exciting peptides for kidney health is BPC-157, which stands for Body Protection Compound. This peptide was originally discovered in gastric juice, but has shown remarkable healing properties throughout the body. What's particularly interesting about BPC-157 is its potential to reduce kidney fibrosis, the scarring that often accompanies chronic kidney disease and leads to declining function. Research has demonstrated that BPC-157 enhances formation of new blood vessels, modulates inflammatory responses, and promotes tissue healing. In one particularly interesting study, researchers found that BPC-157 helped counteract the effects of ischemia or reperfusion injury, which is a significant contributor to kidney damage and fibrosis. By promoting vascular recruitment and protecting endothelial cells, this peptide may help mitigate the progression of fibrosis in the kidneys. BPC-157 also seems to have a unique ability to help regulate nitric oxide production and protect against endothelial dysfunction, which is crucial for maintaining proper blood flow to the kidneys. This improved microcirculation may explain why some patients with kidney disease experience improvements in function when adding this peptide to their treatment protocols. 
Another fascinating peptide is thymosin beta-4 or TB4, which has shown remarkable potential for kidney repair and regeneration. TB4 is naturally present in most cells of your body and plays key role in tissue regeneration and immune function. Studies have demonstrated that TB4 can reduce inflammation and fibrosis, which are critical processes in chronic kidney disease. In experimental models, TB4 has shown to elevate glomerular injury and protect podocytes, which are the specialized cells that form the filtration barrier in your kidneys. What makes TB4 especially promising is its ability to upregulate actin, a cellular protein essential for maintaining the structure and function of kidney cells. By promoting actin organization, TB4 helps preserve the cytoskeleton integrity of kidney cells under stress potentially preventing the progression of kidney disease. Moreover, TB4 appears to assist in tissue regeneration by promoting stem cell recruitment and differentiation. In the context of kidney disease, this could mean enhanced repair of damaged nephrons and restoration of kidney function. The third peptide I want to discuss today is thymosin alpha-1 or TA1. While not as extensively studied for kidney applications specifically, TA1 has powerful immune-modulating properties that benefits kidney patients, especially those with autoimmune components to their disease. TA1 is naturally produced by the thymus gland and plays a crucial role in immune system regulation. It helps balance immune responses, enhancing the function of T-cells while reducing excessive inflammation. For kidney patients, particularly those with conditions like lupus nephritis, IG nephropathy, or other immune-mediated kidney diseases, TA1's ability to modulate the immune system rather than simply suppressing it, as many conventional treatments do, represents a more sophisticated approach. TA1 has been shown to increase the expression of MHC class 1 molecules, enhance natural killer cell activity, and promote the maturation of T cells, all critical aspects of a healthy, balanced immune response. By helping to restore proper immune function, TA1 may address one of the root causes of kidney damage rather than just managing symptoms. What's especially interesting about TA1 is its potential synergistic effect when used alongside other peptides. Some functional medicine doctors, including myself, have observed enhanced outcomes when combining TA1 with peptides like PBC157 or TB4 as part of a comprehensive kidney support protocol. One of the most exciting developments in peptide therapy is the creation of kidney-targeted peptides specifically designed to concentrate in nephron segments for tissue-specific effects. These peptides are engineered to accumulate in specific areas of the kidney, enhancing therapeutic efficacy while minimizing systemic effects. For example, some peptides have demonstrated selective delivery of therapeutic molecules to the proximal convoluted tubules where they can remain for several days. What this basically means for patients is the potential for more effective treatments with fewer side effects, a cornerstone principle of functional medicine. So rather than taking medications that affect your entire body, these targeted peptides could deliver therapeutic benefits precisely where they are needed. So how can you access peptide therapy if you're interested? Currently, most peptides are considered investigational compounds in the United States, though they are increasingly being used in integrative and functional medicine practices. If you're interested in exploring peptide therapy, first, it's absolutely critical to work with a knowledgeable physician who specializes in peptide therapy and has specific training in using these peptides. This might be the functional medicine integrative doctor or a naturopath physician with advanced training. Never attempt to self-administer these peptides without professional guidance. Second, be extremely cautious about where you source these peptides. There are many compounding pharmacies that make these peptides, but quality varies tremendously. Be very careful about ordering peptides online as the source and purity are often unknown. Poor quality peptides can contain harmful contaminants or incorrect dosages. Third, understand that peptides require careful administration. For example, PPC-157 can sometimes exacerbate mast cell activation syndrome or histamine issues in sensitive individuals and may need to be combined with other peptides like PEA or KPV or started at a very low dose. Only a trained physician would know these nuances. Fourth, expect comprehensive testing before starting therapy. 
a good physician will want to understand your baseline kidney function, inflammatory markers, and overall health status before recommending specific peptides. Fifth, be prepared for a personalized approach. The most important thing about any treatment, including peptides, is personalization. What you specifically need based on your assessment, labs, and other advanced testing is very important. Sixth, understand that peptides are typically part of the comprehensive protocol and not a stand-alone treatment. Diet, lifestyle, targeted supplementation, addressing the root cause still remains foundational. It is important to acknowledge potential drawbacks. Research on many peptides, especially for kidney applications, is still emerging. Quality control can be an issue. Cost can be prohibitive, as these treatments typically aren't covered by insurance. And many peptides require subcutaneous injection, which isn't ideal for all patients. Despite these considerations, for many patients with progressive kidney disease who have exhausted conventional options, the potential benefits may outweigh these drawbacks. As we wrap up today's episode on peptide therapy for kidney health, I hope you're feeling both informed and optimistic about the emerging options for addressing chronic kidney disease at its root. Peptide therapy represents exactly the kind of bridge between conventional and functional medicine that I believe is the future of healthcare. Scientifically grounded yet innovative, targeted yet holistic. If you're struggling with kidney disease or know someone who is, I encourage you to research these options further and discuss them with your physician. Remember, the best outcomes typically come from integrating conventional care with functional medicine approaches, not abandoning one for the other. Thanks for tuning into the Wellness Focus with Dr. Bisma, where we are rewriting the rules of health and giving you the tools to thrive. If this episode spoke to you, please subscribe and share it with someone who is ready to take control of their well-being. Also, please consider leaving a review. It really helps people find the podcast. For more expert insights and resources, follow me at drbesma.com. Your health, your power, your vitality. It starts with you. See you next time.